Hi everyone, this is Vidya from What's Your Home Story. So today I wanted to talk to you about a disease that has been affecting my knockout roses as well as my drift roses. It's called the rose rosette virus. Actually the rose rosette disease, which is caused by the rose rosette virus. Um, and this, these are transported by a mite, a very tiny mite that uh, moves from one plant to another. Now to the big question. How do you know that your rose bush is infected with this virus? What are the signs? So the first rose that I'm going to show you is the one on the right in this picture. It is a white drift rose and has been performing really well for me. So this spring I noticed this um, difference in growth on my um, drift rose. Um, as you can see, it is uh, way uh, darker red than the other stems and the stems actually look deformed when compared to the other ones around it. Um, this is the uh, witch's broom, which is a telltale sign of the rose rosette disease. Um, actually, um, I, I'm just zooming out and uh, in that spot right there, I had another rose last year, a same drift rose that um, we had to pull out because I had had the rose rosette virus. Um, and um, we, this one at that point wasn't infected. So we left it at there, uh, but looks like um, the rose rosette virus got to it as well. So uh, we need to remove this one. While there are other symptoms, this is the most common one that you see. Um, there um, can also be excessive thorns on the stem. I can show you that later on. Uh, the stems look elongated sometimes and unusually uh, thick and um, red. Um, that's another sign. Um, this um, rose that I'm showing you here, there are actually three bushes in there. Again, the same drift rose. Uh, in that, the symptom was slightly different. Um, the witch's broom itself, but it looked like this. Um, so I think this was the initial stage. Um, so I caught it right in time, but I had to pull all three out just to be safe. Um, this is my knockout rose hedge. Again, I had about six or seven plants in there. Uh, I had to pull two out, um, one last year and another um, this year. Um, actually the second one from the um, left and the last one on the end next to the yellow. So here is another one. Um, if you can see, let me go down below. See that? See that? How the stem is different. It is way too many thorns and then the formation is like this. Here there is a big clump and it's way too reddish. Usually uh, the leaves, um, usually the leaves don't look like this. This is what a healthy, good looking rose looks like. This is what an RRV affected branch looks like. So again, I need to get this rose removed before the others get infected as well. So um, I wanted to show you some of the other infected roses in our community. Um, actually, um, this is maintained by the Homeowners Association and all of these are knockouts that are planted pretty close to each other. So this disease is spread by a mite, uh, a very tiny mite, and it um, spreads um, uh, by literally moving from one leaf to another on a plant so when you plant these roses pretty close to each other touching each other the bushes touching each other that uh, increases the chance of the mite moving from one bush to another the mite is also so tiny uh, that it is um, actually transmitted by the wind so um, that is one another reason as you can see here this is typical witch's broom and the stems are very very red so um, again i'm going to show you show you how uh, a good new growth looks like on a rose because that is also usually red uh, but uh, in the case of a new growth um, the leaves turn green like this this is new growth the leaves uh, they start out as red and then this is a new growth as well um, and they turn into green whereas the one that is infected with the rose rosette virus uh, remains red uh, and uh, the leaves are deformed this is actually a good growth this is good growth and i will show you um, the infected one pretty soon um, so this is the same bush um, which has good new growth as well as the rose rose that infected stem. As you can see, it is way too red. The leaves are deformed and um, the stems have excessive growth. 
This is how the witch's broom looked like on my drift rose that was infected last year. Again, depending upon the type of the rose, um, the look of the witch's broom might be slightly different. Um, this one is from this year. Um, again, a rose might exhibit all or just some of the symptoms of the disease. So now that you have seen how the disease looks like in the roses, what can you do about it? So um, first question I always get from people is, can I just chop the stem off all the way to the root? Uh, would that save the plant? But um, unfortunately, no. That is a recommendation that all the experts give. Um, they tell you to remove the whole plant. Um, again, I have had some friends who swear by the chopping the stem off method, um, but these are expert gardeners and I'm pretty sure they might have caught the in, uh, disease at its very, very early stage. So for the general population, um, I would go with what the experts recommend is just take the remove the plant uh, completely. And that is exactly what I did. Um, as you can see, the spot that is empty behind me. Uh, this was the rose that was infected last year and um, this this is actually our uh, knockout rose hedge that you saw earlier and uh, this spot was where we had one that was infected last year and we removed the whole uh, plant out. Again the one that's from um, this year in this spot and we removed that whole plant also and we planted a crepe myrtle. What the experts say is that um, you shouldn't plant the a rose in the same spot for at least the next three to four seasons which would say three to four years earlier i think they used to believe that the uh, virus stays in the soil but new research has showed that it doesn't stay in the soil which is a good thing but um, they do t uh, say that um, in the roots of the plant which we pulled out you know or, or most of the times we might not have gotten all of the roots uh, even though we think we did actually in our case we did not we know that um, so um, some of the roots uh, might have the virus in there and that would stay in the soil in the roots and would get transmitted to the plant nearby so that's why um, they ask you not to plant a rose in the same spot again we followed that i have a crepe myrtle that i moved from the other um, part of the yard into here um, this uh, this empty spot, I'm really not sure what to do with it, so uh, that's why it's empty. One other um, recommendation that they ask us to do is to clean any tools that we use to uh, cut or remove the infected plant uh, with bleach. That would ensure that you know any virus are is killed. Again, new research has showed that it doesn't stay in the tools but then there's no harm in cleaning them with bleach so i actually every time i use a clipper or a trimmer or even a spade that we use to dig uh, these roses out i make sure that i clean them with bleach before i use it anywhere so that is rose rose um, virus for you here in virginia we're in 6b it's becoming very very common like i showed you our uh, community's roses almost all of them are infected so uh, unfortunately we, there is really not much you can do to prevent it. Um, again, one uh, main uh, thing that you can do is when you're planting a hedge, make sure that the two plants don't touch each other. A mistake that I did, um, as you can see, here there are actually three and they're all touching each other. This, this shouldn't be what you should do. Again, this helps the mite to move from one plant to another easily. And like I said, um, it also is uh, spread by wind. Uh, it can be carried by the wind. So again, any plant that is close by is at risk when one is infected. Uh, another um, way you can prevent it is to trim all the roses in early, uh, late winter or early spring. Again, this would ensure that any mites that stay over from the previous year, are, uh, we are eliminating those uh, by trimming. And you need to dispose of all these, um, the infected plant or any of these bushes uh, safely and never co uh, compost it so hope uh, you don't see this disease on your end unfortunately mine are and that's why i'm actually reluctant to add roses um, only one exception i've made is a uh, david austin roses which i love and i'm hoping that they don't get it but um, that's rose a disease for you and hope that you don't see it in your garden thank you for watching happy gardening